And also featuring Smooth Cat, Colossal Boxing Talk as well. And today... Hey, uh, everything all good. First question I want to ask: um, I watched your fight uh, from past, this past weekend or weekend before against uh, Fred Casey, and you look very explosive, very rejuvenated. You know, coming off the loss to uh, Cunningham, could you talk about a little bit about your strategy going into the fight? Because I know you you came out early in the first round. You know, you set everything up off your jab, and you attack with the straight left and the right hook. So. Was it a particular strategy you just you, you went into the fight with, or was it just trying to, you know, overpower and overmatch him? Well, no. Um, can you hear me good? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. And, um, I, honestly, man, my only strategy was to go in there and be smart and box and try to figure this guy out first before I, you know, took any risk in the ring. Because no matter how talented you are, you know, talented you are, when you want to go in there and take a guy out, you got to take risks in order to do it. Right. And so I wanted to figure this guy out because we had absolutely no tape on him, and we didn't know what he could do. We didn't know if he was southpaw or the doc. We didn't know, mm. um, you know, if he had a strong right or left or whatever. Wow, that, that's very interesting now. I mean, um so for the fight, I mean, were you sparring just uh, southpaws and orthodox fighters? No, but what I was doing was, I was sparring against all orthodox mm -hmm. fighters. Okay. But what I was doing is switching up myself, <laughs> doing sparring. And um, just really, you know, just really doing a lot of sparring. Um, this probably was the most rounds I ever sparred in preparation for a fight. Um, and then, too, with the Steve Cunningham lost, one of the things that I, I, I did realize or a mistake that I made was losing my composure. A lot of people thought that I ran out of gas or whatever, and that wasn't the case. You don't run out of gas by throwing 535 fights, I mean punches, in, in a 10-round fight, which is more punches than Maidana threw against Mayweather in a 12-round fight, and they're lightweights, and, and I'm heavy. So... I just I felt like I lost my composure in the Steve Cunningham fight, and so I just wanted to stay composed, throw sharp punches, and be smart, and not swing for the fences every single punch I threw. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, speaking of, uh, you know, I know that uh, mm -hmm. when you were incarcerated, you uh, you were trained by former pro boxer Calvin Davis. Um, I wanted to know, um, yes. could you speak on, um, speak on um, what he meant to you? In terms of your career and how you develop as a fighter, I know you just got out of uh, prison mm -hmm. recently. Yeah. And now yeah. in your corner. So, how, um, could you talk about a little bit about you know what the difference he brought to your tra training camp from other ones? Well, 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 Calvin is one of the very few individuals on this planet that can uh, get a reaction from me that he seeks to get, and 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 giving out information and instruction. You know, some people just really can't tap into your energy. You know what I mean? And, and Calvin Davis is just one of those people, man, that I've met in, in this life that can really, really, truly tap into my energy. And so, of course, you know, we worked together for uh, seven years straight in prison. Every day, day in, day out, you know. And, and I obviously learned a lot from him. And so to have him with me, preparing for this fight was just like, man, you know, it reminded me where I came from, you know what I'm saying, and I was getting great instruction from him, doing sparring sessions, doing practice, you know, whatever we was doing, great information, great instruction, and even during the fight, man, he broke this guy down for me. After like the third or fourth round, he broke this guy down for me so that whenever he switched up south ball, I knew what punch to do. I knew if he was going to come forward or backwards when he switched up with the stop. I knew if he was going to come forward or back. I mean, Calvin just broke this guy down for me, man. Then I'll tell you real quick the instruction he gave me. He said, listen, this guy obviously switching up south ball or the stop. When he switches up south ball, he's moving forward. He's coming after you. But on his defense, he's trying, he's trying to hurry up and switch back to orthodox in yeah. order to defend himself. So he's better offensively in orthodox position. 
when you switch up southpaw, you already know, throw that right hook, straight left, but counter his jab, which is straight left. When he switches up or the top, you already know what to do. You know, you've been training for this. So when I went back out there, every time the guy switched up, I knew how to make the necessary adjustment. Because when a guy makes an adjustment in the ring, you just can't stick to your basic. You have to make an adjustment right along with him. And I was able to make that adjustment and obviously, you know, eventually walk him down and stop him. And you know what? Now, now about the stoppage, I'm gonna say this as a uh, fan. When I was watching it, when you first hit him, I originally I was like, "Oh, uh oh!" Hey, it it it, it honestly looked look like you. Look, I, I thought you killed him. How hard you hit him? I really did. And it took me to look at it and, and see them to uh, kind of wake him up, revive him to see that he was all right. But now I'm gonna ask you this: now, now when you when you knock guys out. Do you get a, do you get like an instant rush or do you like or are you the type who, who you like to see if they are right then you get your rush? I like to see if they're okay, okay. and then you know I can go ahead and celebrate. You know I don't want to you know seriously injure anybody in that ring. You know what I'm saying? Right. But you know they're trying to do the same thing to me that True. I'm trying to do to them. One of the most scariest knockouts was in Atlantic City against uh, Ferrero and. I had stopped him in the first round, and, you know, they had to take him out on the stretcher. He didn't, He never woke up in the ring, and that was scary, you mm-hmm. know. And, 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 and that wasn't the first time, nor was it the second time. That was like the fifth time I knocked the guy out, and they from the stretcher in, you know. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they shoot the gun, you know. But um, I was just thankful that, you know, he did get up and he was all right. And once I saw that he was woke, and I saw him moving his legs. I was like, okay, he's all right. Okay, okay. Be cool. Okay, um, okay uh, back to your fight with uh, Ryan. I don't know if you're going to be talking about the first fight, but I want to talk about a potential rematch because, you know, he won um, a, a fight uh, a few weeks before um, before you fought, and it seems that uh-huh. nobody's knocking down the door to fight. You know, no heavyweight's knocking down the door to fight either one of you guys. So if there, you know, it's kind of been like a... a like a, um, I guess, a push to get y'all back in the ring since y'all may not have any valuable, uh, you know, uh, opponents right now. I know you just fought, and he just fought, but mm-hmm. has there been any talks or premature, or, you know, discussions about setting up a rematch for early next year? Well, shortly after the fight, um, we were looking at HBO, you know, for the rematch shortly after the fight, and we were trying to put it together. But, um, that didn't pan out, and and to be honest with you, um, I I I don't think you're going to see a rematch. Um, I, I pushed for it strongly. I pushed for it, you know, over the internet doing interviews. And my people's pushed for it, and it just didn't pan out. And at this point, you know, from a business standpoint, if you look at where they got Steve ranked at now in the IBF, he'd be a fool to get back in that ring with me. And so he's in a, a good position, man. And, you know, I, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I, I like the guy. I like how he has carried himself with that. You know, he's not bragging or anything. He knows that it was a very close decision. And, and, and uh, well, it should have been a close decision. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, one referee had it 90 to 97. You know, he didn't give me one point, <laughs> even though I knocked quite a round up. You know that was it was it was hometown cooking, but at the same time, I can't take nothing away from him. You know, he's he's pretty much you know giving me uh, all the respect that any fighter would want to receive from another fighter who actually got the nod against him. And um, I want to see him do good, man. You know what I'm saying? And and, and and you know he's where he's at, man. I'm where I'm at, and you know I, I wish him the best, man. But to be honest with you, I just don't think that fight. Is the biggest fight for me. I'm looking for the biggest fight for me. I'm looking for the best fight for me. I'm looking for a fight that's going to get me in a position for that, that title. And um, they're talking to some people, some strong, very strong people overseas that um, has, you know, some affiliations with the Crisco's. And uh, we're working on that right now, man. And, and uh, it's about that time in my career that I take this show on the road anyway. I've never fought overseas or anything like that. And so um, I think that uh, you're going to see me fight overseas real soon. 
Ooh. Okay. Uh, speaking, it's book smooth. You got one? You got a question? Uh, you, you know what? Hey, I'll, I'll let you run this one. Then I'll, I'll get the next one. All right. Um, you're speaking of um, Vladimir Klitschko. Uh, what were your thoughts on his performance against um, Pulev uh, yesterday? Right for the bum, you know. I mean, let's be realistic. You know, this guy, this guy that he fought, you know, I don't even want to call his attempt to defeat the champion as a lackluster one. I just want to call it as one, call it how I see it and how everybody else saw it. This man came to get a paycheck. And um, he may have had it in his mind prior to the fight that he can go in there and beat Chris Stoke. But once that, those lights, cameras, and action took place, I think he lost all his uh, courage. I don't think that um, he was mentally uh, strong enough to get in the ring with this guy. And um, obviously, if you're not mentally there, you're not going to be physically there. Right. And so, you know, it just wasn't a good performance at all. You know, I mean, he probably could have stopped him earlier in the fight. And it's really crazy, man, how all these guys go over there fighting him. And some of them are even being recycled you know, back into the position of fighting him again <laughs> for, for a title fight. And and, and, and and they go over there with the same, you know, lackluster performance, man. And it looks like they're not even trying, you know. And, and you know, I, I I can't say anything bad about Crystal because him and his brother have been in some wars back in the day, you know. But lately, you know, they, they can handpick their opponent and, uh, they can steer and, 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 and redirect certain opponents towards them. And uh, they're fighting who they want to fight, man. And that's why, you know, the man's mm-hmm. up on fight. So when we hear that he's fighting somebody for a title, we got to go look on the internet to see who they are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I definitely agree. Go ahead, Smooth. All right. Now, now, a question I want to ask you now. Um, I know you campaign in that heavyweight, and, and I, I know I think I heard you say before that, that you pretty you pretty comfortable in heavyweight. But have you have you ever considered taking the um uh trying to lose the weight to try to become a cruiserweight at all? I actually tried that. Um, I tried getting down under two hundred one. I tried getting down under two hundred one, mm-hmm. probably around ninety nine. And I, I, I literally uh, dehydrated. I got real weak. Because after I lose about 10 pounds, I, I begin to lose muscle. Mm. And if you saw me at that fight that just took place Saturday, if I look small, believe me you, you're not looking at no fat added to that weight. I came right. in at 232, and that's a solid 232. And, you know, as long as I can hit like a, a heavyweight, as long as I can be... Uh, 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 one of the faster heavyweights, you know what I'm saying? I'm very, very comfortable at this weight class. If I lost 31 pounds right now, I'd disappear, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we definitely don't want that. Definitely don't want yeah. that. Um, I want to get your thoughts on, uh, I guess, a fight that's been made or close to being made. And one of the guys that you definitely want to fight is Deontay Wilder um, taking on Burn, Mr. Hearn, I guess, potentially early um, next year. What are your thoughts on that fight, and, and who do you favor early on going into that fight? Um, you know, you, I, I, I can't hate on any fighter, man, that works his way up to a heavyweight championship fight. I can't, I can't, you know, can't hate on that, you know. I can only be happy for, for my brother, you know what I'm saying, that they're accomplishing goals that they set out to accomplish. I can only be happy for them based on that. Having said that, when you look at Deontay Wilder, he hasn't fought anybody. I don't think he's ever even fought a top 15 fighter, let alone a top 10 fighter. So Hmm. it's going to be a challenge for him to step up that abruptly in the type of competition and the level of competition he's going to get from Stavern. However, Stavern is a laid-back type of fighter who relies a little bit too much on his punching power and not enough on his boxing skills. So Stavern is going to have to get on his bike and not fall behind and, 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 and bank on that knockout like he did with Areola. I kind of um, fear what type of boxing skills he really has if he has to use them. Because honestly, in my 
honest opinion. When you let Ariola, somebody that I think is slow, I think he's um, not a good boxer, but he has a lot of heart. He's proven that he has a lot of heart. But when you let a guy like Ariola outbox you for all those rounds, that says something about your boxing abilities and your boxing skills. Now, maybe he knew something we didn't. Maybe he knew. I know I'm going to knock him out, so I don't care about him winning on the cards. But when you are so far behind defending your title, you know, against a guy that is not that good of a boxer, you know, that kind of questions your boxing skills. So, Stavon can't sit back and, and, and let Deontay get ahead on the cards. Deontay is obviously going to come out using his reach, using his height. And, and using his jab, and, and, and I think he's going to try to box more because he doesn't want to get caught early, of course. So Stavern's going to have to be on his game, man, and, 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 and learn how to take away that reach and height from Deontay and get on the inside and let it stand. So, so it's going to be an interesting fight, man. Um, You know, I, I toss it up for Stavern if he takes it to Deontay the way that, you know, a champion should. But if he gives the same type of performance that he gave against Ariola and Banks on the knockout, he may just lose the title. Okay, well, that's an interesting take. I definitely agree with you on your uh, on, on what you said about both fighters. Mike, you got some? Um, now, now I'll say this. Let's uh, I mean, let's go down the line a little bit. Let, let, let's say you win. You you win a, a a few good fights and the Deontay Wilder fight is on the table. Let's just say he's the heavyweight champion. Now for you, because uh, I heard you just say about Stavern needs to do the right thing to get on get on the inside. Now what what would you do necessarily to have to let you be to be able to be successful on getting on the inside of uh, Wilder's reach? Take it to his ass, you know. <laughs> foot speed, you know, and get on there in his chest, you know, a guy like that, you know, I don't think that he's that fast and tough enough to keep me at bay, you know, I'm going to get in there on you, I had to use a lot of speed against Steve Cunningham, and he's been telling people that this guy is a lot faster than, you know, it looks or people think he is, right. I'm very fast on my feet, you know, and um, I know that I can move quicker on my feet and take certain angles away. Or, or create certain angles that Deontay never saw nor can do. So I don't think I would have any problem whatsoever getting to him on the inside. And he's a come forward fighter anyway. So yeah. hell, all I gotta do is stand there and you know slip a few punches, and he's going to be right there where I need him to be. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, because. <laughs>
you know, the exposure thing, yeah, you want to fight on HBO, yeah, it's more money, yeah, okay. obviously it is, and definitely you want to go where the money at. But I can't sit here and whine and cry about HBO or think that unless I fight on HBO, I'm never going to make it or anything like that. Um, I know that Klitschko uh, has signed a deal with HBO. A lot of people don't know that yet, but he signed a deal with HBO. So they're obviously going to have more heavyweights fighting on their network. And maybe I could get in the mix of those things. We, we, we're talking with the man. And, you know, they uh, some of their guys came to my last fight, you know. And if you watched the fight, you heard me shouting HBO. And I had to right. shout HBO. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, you know, I, 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 I'm, you I'm, know I'm, I heard that part. part. question for you now uh this is about another heavyweight who's who's been in the news a lot lately for uh harassing the hell out of the uh the current heavyweight champion uh uh-huh. shannon briggs now uh-huh. now now you as a heavyweight do, do you do you look at what shannon briggs is doing do you look at this as good 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 promotion for the heavyweight division or is it just just a, a non-deserving guy going for a fight that that he trying to talk himself into a fight. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know what? In the beginning, in the beginning, I said that you win, you get a heavyweight championship fight by winning fights and by beating top ranked fighters. That's how you get a fight. You don't get a heavyweight championship fight by stalking. However, with the press and publicity he's getting, doing what he's doing, I can't hate on him, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, one thing, man, I I can't do nothing but shake all my brother's hands, man, and wish them the best, you know what I'm saying? Unless they get in that ring with me personally. Or unless they bring any drama towards me personally. Other than that, man, if if it's working for this guy, man, then, you know, I hope he gets it. You know what I'm saying? But in, in reality... You know, we all know that the way that we want to see a person get a heavyweight championship title fight is by working hard, training hard, winning fights, and beating, you know, formidable opposition, beating formidable opponent. You know what I'm saying? That's what we want to see fighting. The heavyweight champ, you want to see someone fighting the heavyweight champ that has a chance of beating him. And when you look at Greg's past performances, his last few fights and the type of competition he's fighting, and how he's done against them, you, you don't see a person that looks like they can beat the heavyweight champ. Right. However, man, hey, if, if, if it's working for him, man, then my hat's off to him, man, for real. Most de- I agree with you. I was going to say, he, he, uh, he, he, he definitely has a movement going with this. Uh, he, he, has, he was over in Germany, has hundreds of people screaming, let's go champ. In Germany, <laughs> and I, I would, like I say, hey, he he's promoting the hell out of this fight. Potentially, he really is. Most definitely, you know, I, I don't think he deserves it. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, Amir, if, if he um if it gets him to fight, more power to him. Right. Um, but you know, uh, before we wrap it up, we just want to thank you again for granting us another um, opportunity to interview you and to catch up with you to discuss, you know, your recent performance. And victory, as well as other things in Boston. Like I said, we want to thank you again, and um, hopefully, we catch you up after the next fight. Um, and, and hopefully, it's a big fight for you. Mike, you want to say some, you know, closing words? 
Hey, just um, like I say, I, I want to wish you the best of luck in in, in everything future boxing. A hey, uh, one one day, I I hope you get the opportunity to become the heavyweight champion or at least fight for the heavyweight championship. By all means, just hey, I just wish you the best of luck. Thank you, sir. Have a great night. Could you do us one favor before you uh, get out of here? Could you just shout out anything? Could you just shout out Colossal Boxing Talk? Colossal Boxing Talk, right? Yeah. like button for us leave your comments in the comment section anything pertaining to this pertaining to the interview a, a question you think we should have answered or just hey just leave your comments in the comment section i'll definitely get back to you in my earliest convenience also hit the subscribe button for us keep showing colossal boxing talk the love and support and we're gonna keep bringing you exclusives smooth cat out <laughs>